multiplying algebraic terms by algebraic terms. Rule for multiplying algebraic terms by algebraic terms. Multiply both numbers, coefficient, and add the exponents. Example 1, 2x to the second power times 3x to the third power. In this particular problem, we're going to multiply the coefficients, which are also called the numbers, 3 times 2 is equal to 6, x to the second power times x to the third power is equal to x to the fifth power because we add the exponents of the variable. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Example 2, negative 4c times 3c. Multiply negative 4 times a positive 3 is equal to negative 12. c times c is equal to c to the second power. Remember that the exponent of this c is a 1 because when no exponent is present, it's understood to be imaginary 1. Example 3, y to the second power times y to the third power. In this particular problem, we multiply the coefficient, the numbers. It's understood each y has imaginary 1. 1 times 1 is equal to 1. y to the second power times y to the third powers is equal to y to the fifth power because 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Now let me show you the proof that y to the second power times y to the third power is equal to y to the fifth power rather than y to the sixth power. y to the second power times y to the third power is equal to y to the fifth power. Let's just pick a number and substitute that number in for y. In this case, I'm going to use the number 2. 2 to the second power times 2 to the third power should equal to 2 to the fifth power. Let's multiply. 2 to the second power is equal to 4 because 2 times 2 is 4. Times 2 to the third power is equal to 8 because 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 2 to the fifth power is equal to 32 because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 8 times 4 is 32. 32 is equal to 32. So you have proof to see that y to the second power times y to the third power is equal to y to the fifth power. And this is the proof to indicate, to show you that the answer is not y to the sixth power. Let's do example four. A negative w times a negative w. Again, remember, when no number is present, in front of the variable it's understood to be a one. Negative one times a negative one, it's gonna be a positive one W, again, is understood that the exponent is a 1. The exponent is a 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So the answer is a positive 1 W to the second power. It can be written without the 1 as W to the second power. Example number 5. A negative S times S to the second power. Again, it's understood that the coefficient of the number in front of the variable is a 1 when there's no number there. We can place a 1 before each of these variables. A negative 1s times a negative positive 1s is equal to a negative because a negative times a positive is a negative s to the third power. How do we get the third power? It's understood that this s has imaginary 1, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So the final answer is a negative s to the third power. Many students wonder, when will I ever use the algebra that I'm learning? Now you've all seen firefighters. Now listen to this firefighter as he explains how he uses algebra to put out fires. 
Uh, in the fire service, it's very important for us to know uh, how much of a supply of water we're going to have. And usually we use the fire plug. And most normal fire plugs are set at 36 PSI. So in order to know the gallons per minute, we have this formula. And uh, so what we're going to do is work out a problem so we know how many gallons a minute we're going to be getting out of this hydrant. We're going to be using this end here so we know it's two and a half. So that's the, the diameter, two and a half, and that's squared, times the pressure, the square root of the pressure, and that's 36 times 0.9. And we have this constant number of 29.7. Five, six, seven, times 0 0.9, 29.7. So that's 29.7 times 6.25 times 6, that's the square root, times 0.9 comes out to... one thousand to gallons a minute that we'll be getting out of this plug from this fitting. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.